Our headline story today and the latest in Turkey and Syria, where the death toll from last week's earthquake has risen to over 37,000. In Turkey alone, the number of deaths has exceeded 31,600, while those in Syria have surpassed 5,800. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has agreed to allow more UN aid deliveries to enter opposition-held northwest Syria. That's according to UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Meanwhile, UN aid chief Martin Griffith says the rescue phase is drawing to a close with the focus now shifting to providing shelter, food and schooling. Let's cross over to Natalie Carney, who's joining us live from Adana in Turkey. Natalie, search and rescue efforts are continuing. What is happening where you are? Yes, rescue efforts certainly are continuing in many parts of the earthquake-hit regions, uh, particularly in the south, in the province of Hatay, in Karaman Maras, and Malatya. Many areas still seeing rescue teams, uh, but not as many as before. We have, uh, according to the foreign ministry here in Turkey, nine, just over 9,000 foreign personnel still on the ground here in Turkey, working solely on rescue and recovery efforts. They are expecting another 700 as well to arrive, but that's still below. Uh, the more than 10,300 we saw uh, just a couple of days ago. That being said, despite the odds here on the eighth day, miracles are still occurring. After 198 hours uh, in the city of Karaman Marash, two people were extracted from the rubble alive, a 17-year-old boy and another man. After 182 hours in the province of Hatay, another teenager was also uh, extracted from the rubble, still alive as well. So despite uh, the, these comments about changing to uh, recovery efforts, as you see, these rescue efforts are still so very, very much important. Well, Natalie, the UN says the rescue phase of the disaster response is drawing to a close and that attention is now shifting to caring for survivors. How's that going? Yeah, well, as you can see, I'm here in Adana International Airport, where international teams are coming and going. We did speak with an Estonian rescue team that is leaving the country after being here the last eight days. But we've also spoken with teams uh, arriving. And as you've mentioned, we are seeing sort of a change in focus of those teams from rescue to for more sort of support humanitarian and recovery efforts. Uh, the Indonesians, for instance, have just had 105 doctors and nurses arrive here in Adana. They're just waiting for their equipment to be cleared, and they'll be heading down south to the province of Hatay. Uh, but also, interestingly, we met a bunch of South Koreans here, and they are part of uh, a rescue team that is coming to the country. So we still are, as mentioned, seeing some of these rescue personnel coming into the country. And again, when we're seeing people being pulled out of the rubble alive, uh, despite how many they may be, it just proves how desperate we still need to focus on rescue efforts. We cannot just put that aside yet. There still could be more people alive uh, underneath those buildings, and it's ever so crucial. We're also seeing teams here of independents uh, who are paying for all of this themselves, have bought all the medicine themselves, have paid for their airlines, have paid for their places to stay. Um, quite remarkable stories of people who have no connection to this country, uh, have never even been here before, but have still spent um, what they have just to be here and do what they can to help support the people. So we are, we are seeing a shift from rescue to recovery, uh, but it is really worth emphasizing how much we desperately still do need those rescue efforts that are being made. Natalie Kane in Adana. Equatorial Guinea has confirmed.